okay, this is going to happen after your surgery, and it don't. They said, I'd never get a stopped up sinus in here or that little bit that they took out of here because there's not enough fibers and the little sinus pockets that takes infection and, you know, sinus drainage out of it. And um, they lied. I've got worse sinuses now. So tomorrow I have a, to call the doctor in the first thing in the morning, the ENT that did the cancer surgery, and ask him if he can help me out. Hey, Just Truth, welcome back to the room. Glad to see y'all tonight, people. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start. Remember, tonight it's y'all's turn to ask questions. So we're going to try to, or tell us what you think. Is the Bible that, hey, Margie, the Bible today. Now, how that is, sis, the Bible today, is it true to word? It is, is it exactly what God wanted us to have in the world? To be reading, to be studying. Um, I did a lot of research today, and maybe that's why I'm tired too. Um, besides the craft and then, you know, different things. I talked to some people, got messages back. I think I want to share some of them with you. A lot of the ministers preaches from the Bible, but will only preach about certain things. Even in Rosalie, how you doing? They will only teach about certain things out of the Bible. So I asked one of the ministers why. And I got an answer today. He said, because if we would strictly teach word for word of the Bible, we'd be wrong in how we're living, how we're praying. He said, the only thing the Bible gave good to prayers is when Jesus gave the prayer, our Father, to everybody and told them this is an example of how you should pray. And he said, this is an example of how you should pray. It doesn't say that we should. See, I was Catholic. I was raised with the rosary and all that. I didn't know the mysteries, but I knew the Hail Mary because we repeated it so often. Do we really have to repeat prayers word for word every day? Don't know. The old people, like my father and mother and the grandparents and all that, even my ex-husband's grandmother, she prayed the rosary 10, 15, 20 times a day. When my mom had her stroke. Hola, how you doing? When my mother had her stroke, one of the ministers I knew came up and said that he would go to her every day and pray the rosary with her. I had called the ministers. And they wouldn't come pray with her. The priest from the church she went to wouldn't even come. They said, there's a minister there. And that I said, fine, we don't need you. No. I didn't, Rosalie, because unless you've sent it to the Akira, white wolf woman at gmail.com, I won't get it. Cajun candy is gone. It's been gone. Um, I never had a channel with it anyhow. That was just to sell things out of, you know, just talk to people. What has happened 
to our spiritual leaders. You go in the hospital and you ask for a spiritual leader to come talk to you. You don't get one. And I'm like, why don't you get one? And it's like, what is it that this world is actually coming to? Why is it we can't get spiritual help when we need it? We're, we're down in the dumps when we are lonely. Um, we're needing somebody to pray with us or just talk to us. And you kind of... Wait, I'm reading something, everybody, and then I'll share it with you. For the best of the people in here, Eric, I'm going to ask you to leave, please. Hey, Belinda. No, I'm not. I'm just having to not judge, and it's hard not to. Um, because it's God that's going to judge someone. So, yeah, no, I'm okay. I'm hurting. Rosalie, I'm hurting really bad, and I'll be okay. So I was raised in a Catholic church, raised to believe all the preachers and what they said and what they preached. And everything they'd done was supposed to be right. Not everything. Yeah, he's just about 15 feet from me. Um, sometimes when we see or hear something or read something, kind of stirs our spirit. I got away from the Catholic Church because I wasn't getting the spiritual need I needed. Uh, the only one, Father DeBlanc and Monsignor DeBlanc, was about the only two priests that, well, it was Monsignor DeBlanc, that I, the church didn't want to get another woman. Then he'd come back when he got too tired of her. Church, Christ the King, it was, he went, here he said I felt that he told me I couldn't take communion he said I'll have a talk with him over first and all this having communion given to them it changes a person I didn't get the word I needed one was in a hurry the other one walked with a cane he was so old was to hear Jesus' name to hear a prayer with the word God in it, our creator. It changes a person. It really does. So 
sometimes our inner spirit can be shaken almost to the core of something that's going on in our lives in the rain from new jersey and them and new york hey al welcome back back to and aftershocks over there like sorry my allergies everybody um south of san antonio where they were going to build this big old entertainment thing hey kyle my brother i love you miss you I get notifications 10 minutes after you go off. That's why I hadn't been in your live in the last two days. It's just like your people aren't getting the notifications. Sorry, y'all. Like I said, I got allergies and we don't know. They've been spraying things at night here for mosquitoes and stuff. And that just does not help my allergies. So when we're in need to talk to someone spiritually and find out and have questions and you can't find the answers how can our spirits be balanced that's why we had last night that's why we have tonight but some of the stuff i read really upset me okay Last night, Captain was saying, check into the book of Enoch. It was taken out of the Bible. Completely taken out. And people ask him why. What was wrong with it? What's this? What's that? Actually, the church took it out. Because it didn't go with anything or everything else. I'm trying to find the reasoning. Here it is. Okay. This is what I found. The book of Enoch is apocalyptic in theme and discusses Enoch's experiences with the fallen angels. Hi, Mike. How you doing? So, yes. It told us something that nobody wanted. Okay? It told the people and explained about the fallen. I have a reading disability, okay? Don't put me down for that. Don't put anybody down for any of their disabilities, please. So the thing goes... Last night we were talking about the fallen angels. When God went to sleep, on the day he rested, he had seen everything was good. When he woke up, he didn't like what the angels had done, so he called, he dismissed them because they had chosen human wives and stuff. They had put things on earth that God didn't like. Its various religions' messages reflect the mindset of society over several centuries, leading to the doubts about its authenticity and authorship. Book of Venus. I have to scratch my head on that one.
I'm glad for you, Mike, that you're doing well. May God keep blessing you. So you want to talk about Enoch. 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 Sorry, my sinuses. I've had cancer surgery in both sinuses, and it's Enoch. Okay. Even Wolf is <laughs> correcting me over there. People. That's why I said, why is the Bible almost formatted in the way it is? We hear the preachings. We hear of the battles between good and evil. About Rebecca and all the others. Esther. Things that they wanted everybody to know. But what about the good and bad? Excuse me. Anyhow, I have my voice turned off. It's still going to go blink. Sorry. Or maybe it's this one. Let me see. Because I'll turn the voice down on this one, too. Yep, that's where the other one came from. I don't want to be disturbed tonight. So, did you send it to La Akira? Let me check real quick, y'all. Well, print up uh Boy, they're making up lies tonight. So it all goes to the sheriff. Me. Go look under spam and everything. No, I didn't get it, Rosalie, unless you sent something nasty. And I don't think you would. Which account? The one account I have, La Akira. I don't have that password. I'll forward it to you. Y'all wait a minute, okay? It's just stuff we have to do. People are just mean and ugly. That's all they are. Oh, I'll leave it. He needs to print that one up. Yeah, well, you know, sometimes kids say, Mommy, it's time for you to give me some attention. It's the same as my name here, La Akira, then white wolf woman at gmail.com. I went to change it, and the tribe says, No, you're not. That's the name we gave you for the other group. You've had it for almost 20 years now so the thing is the bible tells us everything good they tell us the history of one generation to another and how they had to fight then when jesus came along and what happened after jesus so I had that question last night, and it made everybody start thinking. Let me see if I can. I might not have copied it. Okay. Okay.
I did print it out. So I'm going to read it to you. I got it from the internet. And there's a lot of different questions about it. What happened to Jesus between the age of 12 when he was preaching in the temples till he came back at the age of 30? He's gone for 18 years. Actually, the scholars and everything don't know. There's no record of it. There's thoughts of what could have been. Text me your password. Um, I think it's this one. The one I gave you the other day. I'll set it up after a while. Okay. New Testament gap. And that's how they said it. G-A-P. The gap between the life of Jesus and the temple preaching about God, his father. And then there's an 18 year gap. And then the New Testament starts. Where did Jesus go? What did he do? The findings in the temple is described in chapter 2 of the Gospel of Luke. It is the only event of the later childhood of Jesus mentioned in the Cardinal Gospel. This describes Jesus at the age of 12, ditching his parents on a family pilgrimage to Jerusalem. They found him discouraging with the teachers. Just waiting for that. That way it goes straight to YouTube. People. We're talking about religion and faith and everything. And Jimmy, Sheriff Department already knows where you're at. Okay, we're going to continue with a peaceful night. So, what do y'all think? What did Jesus do for 18 years? Where did he go? What did he learn? Did he stay solitude and prayed all the time? What are y'all thoughts about that? I'd like y'all to share it tonight. Just type it in and we'll discuss it. To me, Lent is the 40 days and 40 nights that Jesus was in the desert and gave up this and that and prayed and prayed and prayed. Could he have prayed for 18 years to learn what God needed him to say and do in the next few years of his life than to die on the cross for us? 